Right, the alternative method for finding the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix, other than just using the elements in any row or column and multiplying them by their side minors, one that just establishes a simple pattern, first of all the general case and then doing two examples after that. An alternative way of finding the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix. Start off with a general matrix. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Finding the determinant of that <coughs> by multiplying each of the elements in any row or column, since the determinant of a matrix is the same as the determinant of its transpose, and you can use any of the rows to find this. I'll just do A, B, C though to begin with. Would be A times its minor, which is E, F, H, I, B with the appropriate sign times its minor, that sign being negative 1 to the power of i plus j, i i and j being the row and column. So that row 1, column 1, 1 and 1 is 2, even, so that's positive. Row 1, column 2 for b, 1 and 2 is 3, that's odd, so that's negative. c, row 1, column 3, 4, even, so when it comes to c it'll be positive. B, it's minor. It's minor will be the, ma the determinant of that submatrix, D, F, G, I. And C times it's minor, which is this little determinant, D, E, G, H. Right, so multiplying that out. Determinants of 2 by 2 matrices is it easy. Main diagonal minus the opposite diagonal. E, I minus F, H. B times D I minus G F plus C times D H minus G E. Or maybe I should have had them in alphabetical order. I'll put them into that now. So multiplying it out. I'm going to multiply it out, taking all the positive ones first. So I've got A E I, the positive ones here would be this, plus B F G plus C D so I need C D H minus all the negative ones start from the side C D H so minus C E G minus B D I minus A F H now that's exactly the same as working the determinant that way and the thing with this is <coughs> I've just got these <coughs> Six multiplications to add up, but they form a fairly simple pattern. A E I, A E I is that row there, the main diagonal. B F G, B F G would be if I repeated that cyclically, and the G came across if I just repeated them. I'll put it down just now. We don't actually need them there. If that was just repeated them, A B C. D, E, F, G, H, I, which is just like rotating round the back, which is the way we're going to do it. B, F, G, plus the last one, C, D, H. That's those three. Just multiplying them down. I don't really need to repeat them. Just think of that as wrapping itself around, because it is a cyclic pattern. Imagine that was wrapped around a cylinder. So these two edges joined at the back. And then I went down the diagonals, I would have A, E, I. B, F would wrap round and come back at G. C would wrap round and drop down one and come down here, D, H. And what about the pattern for the other ones? C, E, G. Well, that's just like the other diagonal. Notice that's like this pattern for the simple little ones. Main diagonal minus the opposite diagonal. Main diagonal minus the opposite one. Minus C, E, G now. Next one, after C, E, G, we'll go back to B, D, that would wrap around and come out at the I. And then finally A would wrap around and come out with the F, H. It's an alternative way to work out the determinant. Now it's just a case of tying them side by side with an example. So the first example B, a matrix where all of the elements are known zero. Find the determinant of this three by three matrix. Well, the standard way would be this. I would say, I'm going to put it over here, I would have 1 times 1, 4, 1, 1, 
minus 2 times 3421 plus 3 times 3121. So that would be <coughs> 1 times 1 take away 4 is negative 3. Minus 2 times 3 take away 8 is negative 5. Plus 3 times 3 take away 2 which is 1. So that gives me negative 3 plus 10 plus 3, which is 10. Right, the other way, using diagonals, just like extending extension of that pattern, main diagonal minus other diagonal. So we'd have, using the diagonals, first diagonal, starting with the 1, first diagonal, 1. Next diagonal, 2 times 4 times 2. That's 8 2s, that's 16. Plus, starting with the 3, that would run round and do the 3 times 1, so that's plus 9, minus other diagonal, 3 times 1 times 2 is 6, minus 2 times 3 times 1 is 6, other diagonal, 1 times 4 times 1 is 4, and then adding that lot up, you've got 10 take away 10, 16 take away 6, that comes to 10 as well. In our example C, where there are some zero elements that could simplify finding the determinant. One more quick one. The determinant of this matrix. Now, when you're working at the determinant of the matrix, you can use any row or any column. Whichever is most convenient. Look for the zeroness of anything. That middle column would be ideal, because there would only be one thing to multiply its minus. No point doing zero times anything, zero times anything. So the determinant of that would just be one. The sign of that is negative. It's negative one times its minor. And its minor is one, four, negative three, one. One, four, negative three, one. Which means I've just got negative of whatever this comes to. One take away negative 12. That's going to be 1 plus 12, which is 13. So the determinant of that matrix is negative 13. That's very quick, because you've got zeros to home in on there. What about the alternative pattern? Will that be longer? Well, because of the zeroness, a lot of the multiplications should actually just disappear when you do that. So how fast is the other way to find that? By using the six rows. Well, starting with the two. There's a zero in that row, so it comes to zero. Next one. 1 times 4 times negative 3. That's minus 12. The 3, follow it down, it's got a 0 in it, so that's a 0. Now the subtraction is the opposite way. 0 in it. So the column starting with the row starting with 0. The sum of these got a 0. Minus 1 times 1 times 1, so that's minus 1. Then finally the 2 going down the way, so it wraps around and goes through the 4, 0, so that's also got a 0. So in the end, that just adds up to the same thing, negative 13.